very good very good morning guys hope you are doing good first of all welcome to the session uh we'll start in a while Hi Sanjay, thanks for joining. I think it's uh, very early in the morning for you. 5 a.m. Uh, I think so. Okay, 6:30. uh i will unmute you because generally people uh, I'll, i'll give the unmute access don't worry uh generally when people join there's a lot of disturbance so for first few minutes i yeah i i, I notice that <laughs> thanks right Hey. Hi Sophia. Thank you for joining. Good morning. And hi Roma. Thanks a lot for joining. Others also please introduce yourself. We'll start in 2 minutes. I won't take uh, much time because I believe in starting class on time. okay so today agenda is on uh, uh, the introductory session so i'll be introducing you natural language processing as well as some of the course curriculum uh, what is covered what can be expected what is your outcome etc hi hi rituals thank you for introducing Oh, great, great to see someone from Licious a month. Hmm. All right, so we'll begin the session. Uh, let people join slowly, but uh, okay so one of the motivation i would start with the agenda uh, for uh, creating this course uh, right nlp 100 hours course when i first became a data scientist in 2016 
was quite interviewed with natural language processing and uh, then i didn't find a lot of uh, resources to learn from so i just turned on my video so that you guys can see me as well so this is prithvi from my house in hyderabad all right so when we when i started off this uh, natural language processing learning I didn't find a one good comprehensive place where i could learn everything and uh, one uh, just a moment all right so i will take a uh, brief pauses and answer your chat i won't be uh, answering right away because i'll be in a flow i don't want to disturb that right and uh, second thing you can always put in the chat if you have any queries and i'll come back and answer so i was talking about the motivation for nlp so i didn't find one good place where i could learn uh, advanced and deep nlp most of the nlp courses uh, either revolved around deep learning talking about birth or lstm or they just simply talk about ngram analysis or let's say some uh, sentiment analysis which is like too too basic right so uh, it took me a lot of time uh, to learn it from multiple row sources and so that's the reason i want to have one good masters level depth course uh, of course with beginning uh, at one place and that's the motivation and the uh, second thing is like i wanted to keep it as affordable as possible in spite of being the one of one and only course of its kind and i would always bring it to notice nnp is not just rnns or bad i mean i know there are state of art in some of the applications very few applications but this field is an ocean right so today's agenda goes something like this uh, a brief outcome uh, and then uh, you are followed by thank you radish for introducing a brief outcome and then uh, we'll have a look at all the modules uh, detailed modules or curriculum and we'll also look at the learning methodology and we'll talk about the timings and i'll take questions at the end uh, meanwhile you can always put the questions in the middle also and the session will ideally last for 15 minutes let's say uh, 12 11 10 now i expect it to close by 12 maybe questions may take more time i hope i cleared my agenda for today and uh, let's start with end in mind always people say that we'll start we should start with end in mind so that's what i would say so one of the goal for all the learners is the capability to build an end to end nlp projects in the industry let's say you complete this course uh, and then i believe that Uh, i want the learners should be able to complete a end to end project a poc or a, a real application as well in the industry right having said that i would always uh, tell you uh, akhilesh uh, you can't hear me others others can hear you me anyone else has hearing issues okay so akilesh why don't you just drop out and drop in again right sorry for the interruption and uh, of course if you are looking for further research especially if you want to gain a masters or phd in this field of data science and ai and you want to choose nlp as a specialization i think uh, this course is a good add on uh, the course offers master level depth that i can assure you uh, in multiple domains right when we say masters level depth don't expect everything to be taught in class because most of the things we teach in the class and the rest of the things we give you pointers or references so that you can do further study and uh, the learning is always proportional to the amount of time you keep outside the class also right so we expect you to complete assignments and quizzes and be on time in the classes right you'll be an nlp expert again 
depends upon how hard you work but the curriculum is like exhaustive that i can say and uh, then we have some unique offering called data tales or like use cases if you are really willing to you can always work with us after the course to develop data tales or write for us we have a lot of uh, blogs coming up so these are some of the broad outcomes i can uh, write it for you but uh, above all uh, the knowledge and learning is always the taken for granted outcome so any questions here about this so far uh, on your outcome or anything so if you have uh, any other agenda as well in your mind uh, please write it out i can tell you whether it works out or not because a few days ago a student asked me hey prithvi i want to build a chatbot uh, that's the reason i want to learn nlp uh, of course uh, taking up this course will help you in building a chatbot definitely but it's not an uh, all uh, guide 101 guide to build all the chatbot will give you all the essentials uh, to build each application but this is like a a very broad perspective as well as depth perspective to build a lot of applications not just chatbot and throughout this process of the course i'll break a lot of myths associated with the uh, natural language processing for example uh, if you look at social media always uh, the topics which trends are not the topics or the algorithms or the technology which make money and the business for the companies right if you look at google google doesn't use quantum computing to make money yet right they are still uh, using a uh, what do you say uh, relevance ranking or some advanced search algorithms recommended ads that makes revenue right so whatever in research or whatever creates buzz on social media especially on linkedin or any other social media channels doesn't make money for business so don't get carried away with that kind of buzz which is already there, always being created yes right so we'll start with fundamentals uh, of course these are the main modules text understanding text processing modeling classical nlp text applications and uh, nlp for social media and deep learning for nlp so these are the seven modules on which the course is built i'll discuss a brief about each of the module first of all when uh, natural language processing is not a field which was invented in 2004 or 2010 when deep learning came into picture it has been there for a while let's say from 1970s or 1960s uh, when people wanted to uh, do a lot of translation jobs or uh, the first machine translation model ibm model 1 was key Uh, it came into picture in uh, 1980s let's say 1975 80 time so this field is very old and uh, the text understanding is very relevant very important to understand the field for example uh, you have to understand how we pronounce the words because very important in uh, speech processing today a lot of uh, uh, applications are speech or voice based assistants uh, which again comment so it's a, a amalgamating area of speech processing as well as natural language processing both so uh their pronunciation all this comes into picture today we use alexa or uh, google uh, uh, speakers and everything is voice based siri is voice based right so that's where we start understanding phonetics and phonology or uh, morphology morphology is like different word forms lexical is like a dictionary meaning or different forms of meanings syntactic and semantic analysis is like understanding uh, words in different contexts aklesh not not much speech recognition here not much i would say we'll only discuss phonetics and phonology so uh, when it comes to speech processing right uh, once it is converted into text whatever should be done will be covered here but till conversion of speech to text we don't cover a lot as a part of this curriculum okay uh just one moment uh 
All right. So uh, looking at how sentences form, uh, this is a popular example for parsing, uh, where sentences are not a complete rebase structure and sentences are not completely sequence. So if you look at real data, uh, we generally come back to tree-based data structures or sequential data structures. When it comes to language, it's neither completely tree-based nor completely sequential. It has something of a structure like this. So phrases, phrases are sequences and different phrases will form into a tree. So uh, text understanding is a very small module which uh, wherein we try to understand the fundamental crux of the language, uh, not just English language, but any language per se. And then we go to text processing. Text processing is a purely hands-on module, okay? Uh, when we talk about text processing, how to handle it uh, using computers. For example, these are the tutorials we have, how to scrape a web uh, with beautiful soup and uh, regular, regular expressions or rejects will help you in uh, munching the data or like uh, cutting the data, processing the data, identifying patterns. NLTK is one of the very popular package. If you are good with Python, like Pandas is for data frames, NLTK is for language. One of the very, very good package which handles 90% of your uh, language operations. Then splitting the words, word and sentence tokenization, NLTK we cover from very basic to advanced. Spacey is a uh, hash number two package which can handle a lot of natural language processing activities. We'll cover Spacey also in detail. Stemming, lemmatization, WordNet, uh, Stanford Core NLP is also another package it's made by Stanford itself. WordNet by Princeton University. And uh, look at frequency distributions, how to do n-gram analysis, chunking and parsing, and pivot stacking. One of the very elaborate text processing module, once you are done with this module, I mean, it is almost 10 to 15 tutorials. And if you, with enough practice, you should be able to do any kind of text cleaning activities. Please note, I hope you are in already in data field. You must be understanding data needs a lot of pre-processing steps. NLP needs even more because natural language never comes in structured format. It's very difficult to structure it. Right. The next part we... Uh, go into as text modeling. When we talk about modeling in terms of text, uh, there are at least three or four kind of models. Uh, I mean, most of the times it's a classification model or a clustering model, but how do you identify features, et cetera, is the challenge. The first application in text model is called n-grams application or n-grams modeling, or it is also called as language modeling. Uh, language modeling is popularly used in uh, your keyboards. It's actually next word prediction in short, right? If you look at your keyboard, when you say good morning, uh, then it comes uh, the next word, uh, whether you wish to your boss every day or you wish to your spouse every day, it comes up, right? You say 5.30, it says PM, uh, looking at the time. So there's a lot of uh, context uh, involved in n-gram analysis, like uh, when we build and study n-gram analysis, we'll understand how to put context into picture and get the next word. For example, you are talking about sports. If it is Sachin, then it's Tindalkar. And if you are talking about startups or entrepreneurship, it's Sachin Bansal, who started Flipkart, let's say. And it starts from very fundamentals of occurrences of word, how the probability of word is there, which words are frequent, which words are less frequent and all. We'll study all these n-gram models and uh, the next we'll go to building a text classifier. I hope you have seen this screenshot, anyone? Anyone uses Google News here? So this is a screenshot from way back, I think uh, 2019 or let's say. 
if you look at uh, google news it's one of the news aggregator that means it collects news from a different uh, all the news channels published across the globe now sorting it is a, a major concern classifying it not every website classifies it perfectly or classification according to the google's hierarchy is different so how do you read an text or read an article for example this is the article and how do you classify in the latest and the next thing it is also classified under cricket maybe there are keywords you may say but how which keyword let's say this one is uh, classified into tennis then football then kabaddi kabaddi is not across the globe so this is one real world application of a uh, classification or tagging the documents you come across this kind of applications very frequently and automatic modal based tagging is one of the need of the hour we have ready made implementations also available in the market a lot of uh, industry uses this to build a more ml model uh, especially in the nlp context one challenging thing is this features aspect if you have been into basic modeling and seen titanic data set or let's say uh, employee attrition and all all these features are provided directly which are like numbers which you collect from the data if you look at time series yes you have numbers if you have categorical data you have again data you have one hot and for it especially this features in nlp context is a challenge because what will you put you will put words computer doesn't understand any word you have to come convey it in the form of a number so how we figure out this features such that this classification model runs is one of the agenda in machine learning modeling especially in nlp context the whole nlp world half of the like 50% of the time uh, it's all about uh, cleaning the data and the rest 40% of the time of uh, figuring out what features will uh, make here a better choice so we'll study all possible features uh, in the part of model like either it be frequency distributions either be tf idf uh, bag of words or word to vectors or pure tags or the pure tag distributions uh, or stylometric features there are a lot of features available we'll study all the features which have been experimented over several problems and then uh, classical nlp uh, this was one of the module uh, which discusses about uh, let's say last 20 years or 30 years of research in natural language processing earlier we called it as statistical natural language processing or i call it classical nlp because before the advent of deep learning as well as machine learning still we had models so what are those models uh, especially used in chunking or parsing and especially in the indian language context we need to study a bit of paninian grammar which helps in bifurcating the sentence and understanding the sentences which helps in translation of indian languages also and once you study the grammar of an any english uh, for any language it will be very easy for you to make advanced applications because if you talk about sentiment a positive class or negative class you can uh, determine very easily but if you're talking about uh, reference or if you're talking about summarization take an entire 20 page document and summarize it into four lines let's say right uh, detection of sarcasm or advanced uh, emotions detection detecting grief detecting depression among the texts written by people so these are uh, some of the applications where we go into very high pragmatic level a depth understanding of language is required by the computer not by us we will understand it very well but computer should understand it for this all this essentials the basics uh, how do you chunk how do you parse how do you uh, get the grammar and how do you and of course machine translation one of the very complex task even today we are not successful at machine translation so all this builds upon classical nlp uh, again a foundation stone to understand all the language uh, technology let's say uh, some of the universities call it as computational linguist linguistics 
in linguistics. There are different names for it. Uh, uh, people think it's outdated, but uh, I would say, yeah, the state of art today has much better performance than all these applications. But understanding this only help would develop those state of art. Today, we could train birds or we could train transformers, we could train uh, attention models only because we understand language in a much better way. So a good NLP engineer needs to understand all these fundamentals very well. And that is the reason we introduced this as a part of a module. And uh, till now we were discussing basics, uh, essentials, and now we come to NLP applications, uh, the fourth, fifth module. And we keep discussing uh, all these applications like sentiment analytics, co-reference resolution, uh, for example, what is our pronoun referring to? What is our adverb referring to? Words and disambiguation. Different words mean differently in different contexts. I bank on the bank, which is on the river bank. Right? I bank means I depend on the bank, which is the financial institute located on the river bank. I mean, there is a river flowing and this financial institute headquarters is there on river bank. How do we understand a bank in different contexts? One is verb, both two are nouns. Again, the other two nouns have different context. This is words and disambiguation, very real problem. The name identity recognition. Uh, name identity recognition is identifying entities in our uh, document for, let's say, for example, uh, you come with a document, uh, a 500 page document, and your company wants to know all the vendor names in that uh, document, let's say. How do you identify vendor names inside the document? Right? So name identity recognition catches all the names. Uh, we have different classes, names, uh, organization names, uh, business names, uh, and then we have uh, time stamps, they have uh, date stamps, uh, we have, uh, let's say, currency, right? So uh, these kind of structures, uh, these kind of entities, mining is very important uh, to understand the language. Or for example, Facebook wants to target you with, let's say, ads. For example, uh, one month ago, uh, there's a, series came into a picture, uh, Harshad Mehta's 1992 scam, right? Sony Live uh, is the provider, let's say. Sony Live wants to target all the people on the Facebook who might be interested in stock market, let's say. Now, uh, so Facebook always, to Facebook, uh, WhatsApp or Insta, uh, so these people know uh, what are you typing in the messages to people? What are you typing in the comments and all? For let's example, they extensively profile you. So I look at all these named entities. So the analysis, the keyword targeting, let's say. You search with keyword and you know how many people are uh, interested in that particular keyword, right? So identifying these named entities is one of the application that Facebook has to do. They have done it long back, I'm not telling you they did recently. Yep, it looks at personal chats also, yep. Unfortunately, true. Yeah, so uh, I'll tell you how I came to know about it. Uh, if you have a Facebook business account wherein you put ads or a Facebook business, uh, wherein you can enter a keyword and that uh, Facebook tells us how many people are using those keyword. So if you go into fine print of that keyword search, it will tell you these are the approximate numbers where people used this keyword in their messages across Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook, and on the feeds and everywhere. So yes, they do extensive profiling. Don't think that they don't read into your chats. They do. Even Google does read into your chats. I mean, no one, as a human, they, no, they won't do it but the algorithms might be looking at you. So machine translation is one more applications, one more application where we will uh, look into 
in detail uh, how to build a translator. Then question answering, uh, also called as uh, bracket chatbot, because people know about what is a chatbot, uh, a fancy name which came into picture in recent times, but uh, it's actually called a question answering problem statement uh, or more of IR. IR is nothing but information retrieval. So when we go to question answering, we will study about what are the different types of questions, answers and all. And uh, sentiment analysis also one more important application. You can read it for yourself. I just copied a slide from uh, the real curriculum. One of the very advanced application where people are using it since a long time. Sentiment analysis is not something uh, uh, people are doing it now, but it has been done since 1990s also. In those days when computers are not able to uh, even read the text, we were doing sentiment analysis on the opinion polls, people written and given, right? So it's not just a natural language application, it's more of psychology or a study of people. You will be very surprised on this very topic, 7,000 research papers were published till date. I think this is the highest in any NLP applications. And there are really good solutions available. And today uh, you can just deploy a solution or build a solution for your company according to your need. And one more uh, word cloud. Okay, this is how you build a word cloud to look at how frequent words are there. And uh, of course, throughout the, throughout the curriculum, we'll always talk about a lot of use cases uh, like I'm discussing now. So some of the use cases elaboratively, elaborately we'll discuss here as Quora question answer similarity, understanding the similar questions, uh, deception spam detection, uh, or uh, people who write uh, reviews in a deceptive way on social media. Healthcare tickets classification, one of the popular classification example used in healthcare context and uh, email author identification, identifying the author of an email on a popular email data set. And then factoid question answering, answering the fact-based questions, how to do it. We'll study all these use cases in detail, uh, especially with your, uh, what do you say, uh, name and uh, code, data set and solution. So some of them we built. And one more thing, review analytics for us a snack based company. We did it real and we'll be showing you. There's a special use case. I run this website called the Positive India, which publishes heartwarming stories. I used to run it for a while. So uh, one of the important problem we face is to understand a heartwarming mess of an article. We're not looking at a polarity of positive article or negative article. For example, uh, Biden won the US election and uh, the entire party is like, a, uh, they're very happy about it, uh, Democrats, right? Yeah, very happy about it. The media channels publish and if you look at the polarity there, then it's a positive polarity you find in most articles. But uh, the thing we wanted to focus here is like, a, old man donates his entire pension towards building a school uh, or a dying man donates his organs for other people. Something of heartwarming in nature, motivating you in nature. So these kind of articles are something which we wanted to mine across the internet. And we did, we built a uh, complete scrapper, uh, trained our models and uh, we were decently getting good results over that as well. So we'll show you uh, a deployed version of that uh, use case also as a part of the curriculum. And finally, we'll talk about NLP for social media. Social media has again, uh, very popular in today's world, everything is social media. So for example, uh, social media also has a lot of natural language processing applications. 
code mixing especially what do you mean by code mixing is nothing but uh, people use different languages when they're typing text right uh, till junction tak aap cab pe aa jao uske baad mai pick up karta hu this is a hindi uh, hindi script uh, hindi language written in english script and this is an english word this is another english word and this phrase is english so this is the language people are writing in social media these days and it has become very difficult uh, for the companies like uh, any companies to understand what people are talking about right if it's purely in english then i am able to do it but if it's not uh, this is one important challenge uh, of course uh, this is a latest research code mixing is a problem yet to be solved i will discuss some of the approaches and we'll also do social network analysis how noise in the data are there uh, what are the issues of privacy how do we scale uh, this pure social network analysis and we'll also look at graph theory basics which is essential for social networking uh, and then understanding influence propagation in social media and how communities and roles are built in social media uh, by taking a lot of examples from real networks so this is another 2 to 3 hours module with one hour hands on right so any questions guys so far okay and uh, come last module is the deep learning for nlp so when we talk about deep learning for nlp i'm not uh, teaching you cnns and rnns of course there will be a, a very brief tutorial on uh, how they work but we will be uh, directly going into applications and most of the times when i discuss the applications itself i discuss the deep learning component for example developing and learning word embeddings this comes under the text modeling uh, itself so there uh, we will study about sibo model or glow model uh, which generates embeddings then we discuss text classification then we can use cnns and uh, when we talk about language modeling which is again text modeling application then we can discuss rnns application how to generate text using uh, a bet or any other uh, uh, language models and when we talk about machine translation which is a part of nlp application we'll talk about neural mt that's neural machine translation and other sequential models so deep learning is like more of an application uh, uh, which we'll study in every module i'll touch here and there uh, whenever the deep learning application will come into picture so deep learning will cover under 5 uh, to 7 hours completely and uh, okay so i'll uh, open up for questions for some time and then we can go to if you have any questions uh, i'll tell you one thing yes i think you have on mute access if you want to speak up you can no questions okay uh, hi prudvi yes uh, so do we learn the maths or uh, any kind of formula behind the algorithms or uh, just the uh, python code no no we uh, when i teach i teach completely math behind it especially when we talk about language modeling we are talk about the probabilistic models i'll teach you from basic like how to get the property how to get conditional how to get marginal or uh, when we talk about hidden markov models also we'll teach we'll teach math behind it in sentiment analysis we'll teach you how logarithms and all those works so it's from the scratch from the zero development so we're not just looking at python code itself so it includes a lot of math and uh, wherever required i will elaboratively discuss 
for example, word vectors uh, or class string, all this in includes a lot of math and vectors. So, yep, they will be covered. So, uh, do we have hands-on sessions separately or is it like uh, integrated within the teaching? Uh, uh, I'll tell you, session? but uh, to, to be short in this 100 hours program itself, uh, one hour I will be teaching, one hour I'll be doing hands-on. So, uh, Lakshmi, just uh, if you can share the curriculum sheet, I have shared a, a Google sheet wherein we show how, what are the hands-on, what are the theory. So it goes both hand in hand. Uh, we have classes from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Uh, so 7 to 8, we generally handle theory and uh, 8 to 9, we do the hands-on. Half, half, uh, that's how we distribute. But some of the sessions might be purely hands-on, some of the sessions might be purely theory. But in general, around 40 to 45% is hands-on. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I think someone else okay, raised the hand. Uh, yeah, hi, Prithvi Ashok here. Yeah, hey, Ashok, yes. Yeah, I think you gave a pretty good introduction. Uh, the things what uh, which you have kept is pretty good. I just want to ask, like, uh, if we don't have any prayer, Uh, I missed you, uh, Anand. Hello, I'm Arvind. Uh, Ashok, Ashok. Yes, yes, yes. Ashok. Tell me, tell me. Yes, if if you don't have so, any prayer. Knowledge on the Python coding, I mean, uh, not the core Python. Is it okay? I mean, can we do it in this NLP on the stop and all? Sure. See, when you talk about core Python, if you're talking about... Uh, inheritance or encapsulation or oops side of uh, the Python or any other programming perspective, uh, it's fine. As long as you understand lists, loops, and uh, the basics of Python, uh, you should be able to do it. Even in case you don't know anything about Python also, we'll have some recorded sessions. We can provide basic Python recorded sessions. You can cope up with that. Okay. And uh, I just, and actually I'm expecting like, it, will you help me to deploy the NLP models? Uh, like whether it will be a clustering part or the keyboard extraction, I suppose if I have two lines of code. So is it possible to extract the important keywords which defines the whole meaning of the particular sentence? Uh, that, that is uh, covered. So as far as application part is covered, uh, as far as application is covered, we'll help you build it till the end. For example, you talk, you talk, you asked about, let's say there are the keywords and there are some things you can build. Yes, this program will, uh, by the end, you will be able to build the application, which can be deployed. What we don't teach as a part of this course is like how to run an AWS server, run the script over AWS, or run the script over Azure, that we don't teach you. But till the uh, script, which is a script or the code or the program, which is needed to run the application, yes, we will teach everything, the science behind it. The engineering part uh, of, let's say take a Docker or Kubernetes or putting it uh, somewhere, the full stack part of it or ML operations part of it, uh, we don't discuss as a part. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a, like a different uh, kind yeah, of Yeah, that's a different, it's yeah, a different uh, yeah. But given any application, uh, the science part of it, the algorithm part of it, you will be able to do it. That I can assure. Okay. Yeah. I think, thank you. Thank you so much for answering this. I think Anand, uh, also, you're trying to speak. Okay, Samir, uh, okay, there is no one single book for uh, all this NLP applications, but if you're talking about uh, hands-on, there are, uh, I mean, there are Aureli publishers uh, have very good books on it. If you talk about classical NLP, uh, there are two or three IIT Karakpur professors who have published good books. After class, get in touch with me, I'll tell you. Based on the topic, I can tell you. Look at machine translation. Uh, there are some other books which are really helpful. 
and if you're more looking at deep learning context and then i would more suggest uh, joshua benigo's uh, deep learning fundamentals so it depends upon i again if you're looking at social network analysis there is another book so yeah it, it's based on which books you would uh, prefer to uh, topics okay 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 uh, i actually have this book uh, foundations of statistical nlp by christoph manning so by whom christoph manning oh that's awesome book. Uh, manning uh, manning is an awesome book uh, but it talks a lot of math actually yeah yeah right, right. right. it's a bit overwhelming yeah yeah i mean if you don't have the fundamentals then it will be like uh, if with a mentor you can uh, once you learn this you can go pick up uh, that uh, that they're like very very fundamental they go to math they give yeah, a lot of equations like it will you can't read one page a day i'm telling you uh, right <laughs> good okay so this is how our learning goes uh, we'll have live classes and we'll publish the class notes as well as our slides uh, in depth material uh, as i said uh, for every topic uh, i can refer some text in depth material if you are interested and then at the end of the module we have a quiz and then we'll have a doubts clarification session as a part of the curriculum itself uh, during the live classes itself you can always at the end of the session we leave 5 10 minutes for questions you can always ask them apart from that we also give you a slack channel access once you join the course on the slack you can always interact in the group as well as you can ping me or any other mentor if needed so this is from concepts and uh, when you talk about learning from coding also as i said some time back a uh, half of the sessions are hands on so instructed led demo so i'll be just sharing the screen and i'll be showing off all the code and all and uh, we'll have some class tasks itself you will be doing in front of me if you have any questions you can ping me and there are some take away assignments also and uh, for both class tasks and take away assignments we will have doubt answering sessions and doubt answering is multiple like uh, you can answer after the class in the next class or you can just ping in the slack channel and if needed uh, you can always ping me we can have a one on one so this is the pricing in case uh, you guys have not come across it 25000 inr for the entire 100 hours module uh, because i'm like uh, biased towards students in the colleges we are giving it at 80% off for the college students and uh, yep this is what you get 70 hours of live classes and 30 hours of self paced content and uh, one year access to recorded content and the course content access is like lifetime all the slides all the codes which we give is like lifetime the recordings access itself is limited because uh, we have to maintain our servers but in case after one year also if you were like prithvi i need to revise them again we are generally considered and we give the access after one year free batch transfer uh, i know a lot of people are skeptic about the timings as well as of course uh, work from home too much of stress uh, going on due to work so this is time we are implementing free batch transfer that means let's say you start in batch 3 in the middle you figure out hey this is not working for me then you can transfer to batch 4 whenever we announce it ideally we do every 3 4 months and you also get access to slack channel once the course has completed and uh, let's talk about prerequisites module uh, so uh, generally if you have a basic idea of python it will be very good if you don't we will share you some basic tutorials you can go through it uh, but uh, people who doesn't have any python experience please spend more time in first one month uh, so that you are good with it basic machine learning is also expected uh, if you I will be sharing you some free resources and people who are facing any issues with the basic machine learning also can reach out to me i can either give the access from um, some of my tutorials or uh, any other free resources available so timings are like 7 am to 9 am ist on tuesdays and fridays uh, we keep it morning because uh, you have the best energy and pleasant mind to enhance learning and uh, weekends uh, you can reserve it for practice and 
that's the reason we kept it in morning and believe me guys some of uh, our previous students have personal told me they started waking up in the morning and made it a habit just because of signing up to this class so that's an added perk right some of the predicted challenges for this course are uh, classical nlp sometimes goes above the head so sometimes when you don't uh, get into depth uh, leave it for some time come back and study you'll be able to get it from my side i'll take it as make it as simple as possible but i won't make it too simple uh, to dilute the depth and hands on is simple at the starting and hard at the ending if you don't practice i've seen two batches students a lot of students complain at the end that they are not able to do hands on and one of the prominent reason is they don't practice at the start right so don't do that and uh, 15% of the classes may be rescheduled uh, again maybe uh, not guaranteed but uh, sometimes anything might come over and uh, sometimes classes might cool close early and uh, any infrastructure issues most of the times we are pretty much robust but in case any issue occurs give a 48 business hours to resolve and you can e always email us so these are uh, so this is some course uh, nlp 100 hours course i would say this is uh, one of the bold attempt uh, we are trying to do uh, no one have ever attempted uh, to deliver 100 hours of uh, course so there will be some challenges so yes anand that is also that is also done so uh, for practice there are two things first of all uh, we solve the problems and we solve the course those are tutorials in between the tutorials we'll have class tasks which you will be doing in the class after the class also you have to do some assignments assignments will be released and you have to do the assignments after assignments there are quizzes also uh, which test you right assignments are like open book uh, you can solve it quizzes are like closed book you can evaluate yourself yeah and of course after uh, completion of uh, all these assignments and quizzes we will release the solutions also in case, after some time uh, so you can cross check them uh, that's and one more final note i have to uh, confess openly uh, due to, uh, our batch to happened uh, from uh, let's say november mid should be ending at uh, april end or oh, sorry may end but uh, during this pandemic time uh, especially morning classes uh, a lot of students asked us uh, to stop for a while and that didn't go well with some of the other students who are like very passionate to complete so we were left in a lurch and uh, again uh, shifting places we often take the classes in the office uh, all this uh, made our schedule go haywire so there was some discontentment among very few so i mean let's say three four students we tried to resolve it at the best but i have to tell it openly that this happened because yeah there is some negativity surrounded around it so i wanted to be transparent about it so we learned about uh, that uh, what went wrong because last time uh, uh, some of the students were not able to understand that uh, hard work is required and uh, they were expecting mentor to solve them every problem uh, the people the learners who practiced a lot and uh, toiled enough were very happy but the learners who expected solutions to come out uh, were not so happy so that is something which i have to tell this is not a like a make it easy course give a very simple solution and uh, say hey you have done you have achieved this thing this is a course which tries to delve into depth that i have to be open about it and nlp challenge is ambiguity will resolve it uh, for you so that's all from my side uh, now i'm open for questions any questions anyone
Uh, Ashok, you are trying to speak something. I can't hear you. Uh, I can't hear you. Someone is speaking. Who is speaking? Aklesh, yes, uh, you will be able to do high-end uh, problems on NLP. Anyway, I'm telling you, this gives you a master's level depth. Even if you work properly, you can write algorithms from the scratch. That is the kind of depth we give you. Ashok, you're looking at uh, speaking something. Can't hear you. Mm. Anyone else can hear Ashok? Uh, Ashok, can you type it over? Because I'm not able to hear you. So uh, I think I'll wind up the session if you don't have any issues. Tuesday morning, 7 a.m. is our first class, which will be the orientation class, uh, where I will be showing the course and we'll start discussion also, right? If you're looking for enrollment, you can reach out to Lakshmi. Uh, most of you guys must have uh, already been in touch with her. I'm just typing her number, sorry email. Actually, you can type in your mobile here so that if anyone else is interested, you can uh, reach out to her. If you have any questions and still want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one also, you're most welcome. Uh, yes, Sanskar, uh, we will do that. We'll send you an email. Uh, to all the registered participants, uh, we'll send you a recording of this email. Don't worry. Uh, recording. Sure. Perfect. Any other questions, guys? All right, so I'm assuming that uh, you have no questions and uh, we'll wind up the session now. And you can always reach out to Lakshmi or me. Uh, my email is there in the calendar invite as well. You can always reach out to me. And uh, thanks a lot guys for your time. Hope to see you in the class and have a good day.